Hey guys, how's it going? Brian from Brian Boas here. My 2020 breeding season is off to a really good start. Today I wanted to give you a brief update on some of the pairings I have this year of locality specific boas. And I also want to show you some of the breeding stock I have in my breeding trials. If you've been looking for a locality specific boa, this will give you somewhat of an idea of what to expect from me this year as far as my babies, which hopefully will be available or will be born sometime in the summer or early fall, depending on the locality. I'll continue to update the status of these crosses and my other crosses as time goes on. So if you like this video and you're looking for a boa, please subscribe to the Brian Boas YouTube channel. In addition, there's videos on all other aspects of keeping and breeding boas in captivity. One of my all-time favorite localities that I hope to produce again this year is the Terahumara Mountain Dwarf Boa. And this is my male. He's a uh, Rio Bravo bloodline. He's about 10 years old and probably a little bit less than four feet long. So you can see he's just a little guy, but he's quite the stud. He's, this is his fifth year of breeding. And in the past, he's produced some really beautiful babies in his four liters. So if you have one of my Terahumara babies, this is the father of that litter. This year I have him paired up with my high pink female. So this is the same pairing as I did back in 2018. And so far so good. It looks like he's definitely interested and things are going on. Um, so hopefully these guys will be, babies will be born sometime in late June or early July. A first time breeding for me this year, which I'm really excited about, is my Tamanama Venezuela BCC True Red Tail Boas. So Venezuelan BCC in general are quite rare, but these guys are, this is a very rare locality from a small village called Tamanama on the banks of the Orinoco River. This is a locality established by Terry Cullen, um, and there's very few of these in captivity. So one of my rarest locality boas. This guy, you can see, um, He's a pretty small animal. This guy's about six years old, and I'd say he's maybe four and a half feet long. Uh, my female is probably about five and a half or six feet long, but you know, these are relatively small for BCCs. And so far, he looks like he's shown quite a bit of interest in my female. So I have my fingers crossed on this one. With the true red tail boas, babies are typically born later. So if this guy is successful, I would expect babies to be available probably sometime in the August to September time frame. Or not available, babies born, and then they take a few months to be established. Another one of my all-time favorite locality boas that I try to produce every year is the Hog Island boa. And this year I have my Sears line female paired up with a Sears line male. Um, you can see this girl is pretty big for a Hog Island boa. I would say she's probably about five and a half or six feet. Um, just a very beautiful boa, beautiful orangey pinkish coloration. Uh, this girl first bred for me two years ago and I got a really nice litter. Um, and so I'm repeating that pairing this year with the same male. Um, the Hog Island boas are one of the first of the locality boas in my collection typically to give birth. And, I typically get babies in the late June to early July time frame. Um, unfortunately, it often will take me a few months to get the babies established since a lot of them typically don't feed from the beginning. Um, so they, I, I estimate them to be available probably sometime in the uh, fall of this year after the babies are established. That is, if I do get a successful litter. Last year was my first year breeding in the Pearl Island boa, boa constrictor saboge. And I have another pairing this year and I'm hoping to get another litter. Uh, so this is my male breeder. Um, he's just a beautiful animal. You can see he's practically patternless and he has this beautiful golden blonde coloration. Just a gorgeous animal. Um, I have him with a different female this year. And so far, he's shown a lot of interest in her, and it looks like they're making it happen. So hope to get another litter. Um, with these guys, I would expect it to be sometime earlier for me in the breeding season, typically late June or early July. So we'll just have to see. 
So this is actually not the animal I wanted to show you. Just ran to the upstairs snake room and I found that my male crawl K boa was actually involved in quite a bit of breeding activity with the female. So I decided not to disturb them and let them continue to do their job. Um, so a little bit of background on that. Uh, I had a new male that I got last year and I paired him up with my female, who's the mother of this particular animal that was born in 2017. And unfortunately, he didn't seem to be interested. Um, I had gotten him as an adult from a buddy of mine, and I had only had him a few months before I paired him up. So he probably was not really ready to go, and he wasn't established uh, in, my, in the new environment. So I didn't really see any breeding activity, and I didn't get any babies. It could also be that he's quite a bit smaller than my female. This guy is maybe three and a half feet, actually not that much bigger than this guy. And my female is probably about five or six feet. She's one of the largest crawl key boas that I've seen. So maybe he was a little put off by her larger size. But anyway, I decided I would pair them up again this year and you know, hopefully he's a little more well established in the new environment. And so far it's been kind of mixed. I saw some signs of breeding. It looks like he's more interested than he was last year. But still, I'm not, you know, I'm by no means 100%, and I'm, I'm not even sure if I'm 50-50 on this one, but I went up there, and he was right on top of, you know, of her back, and his tail was wrapped around hers. So it looks like he's trying to get the job done. So fingers crossed that I'll get some crawl key boas. Um, crawl key are actually rapidly becoming one of my favorite boas. You know, I've said many times that I really like the Tarahumara are my favorite of the dwarf locality boas. But these crawl key boas, there's just something about them. They're just so, this guy, he just got this gorgeous light silvery coloration. Um, they're also quite enjoyable to handle. You know, they just kind of hang out and explore calmly. They don't try to get away and they don't really squeeze the hell out of your hand. And they're also such a convenient size. So fingers crossed that I'll have some of these beautiful crawl key boas later on this year. So I was going to grab one of my long jacata that I have paired up. This is the first time breeding for me, breeding the long tail boa, boa constrictor long jacata. It looks like these guys are in the middle of something, so I don't want to disturb them too much. But you can see the male is got his tail wrapped around the female. So hopefully something's going on. These are uh, Eugene Bissett's bloodline of Longicata. And you can see they have this beautiful dark coloration and they've really darkened up nicely over the last few years. And so fingers crossed on this one um, that this will be a first time breeding of Boa Constrictor Longicata for me. One last pairing that I want to share with you that I'm quite excited about is my Pacalpa Peruvian True Red Tail Boa, Boa Constrictor Constrictor pairing. This is the male that I have paired up. So this guy is actually a holdback from my 2015 litter and he just reached breeding size this year. So I decided to give him a go and hopefully get some second generation babies. This guy is actually pretty unusual in that he has these really cool peaked bat shaped saddles. In fact, I call him Batman, one of the few boas that I've actually given a name to. And I have him paired up with an older female this is a female that I paired up two years ago with a different male. Unfortunately, I just got slugs from that pairing with no babies. So I'm hopeful that this guy is going to be able to do the job and we'll have a nice litter of Pacalba Peruvian boa constrictor constrictor available later this year. If, it, if he does get the job done, I would expect babies to be born probably in the September or October time frame. The Peruvian boas one of the last boa to give birth that I have in my collection. These animals have been paired up since mid to late December, so it's been about a month and a half. And what I'm going to do now with most of them is I'm going to separate the pairings into separate cages or tubs, and then I'm going to offer them a slightly smaller than normal food item. So, if, for example, if they normally eat a large rat, I'm going to offer them a medium sized rat. And then I'll give them about a week or so to digest. And then I'll pair them back up and they'll be, allow, they'll be allowed to pair up for about a month, maybe a little bit longer. And then I'll repeat the process and feed them again. And typically I do this until I see signs that my female is gravid 
and I have my post ovulation shed. And after I'm pretty much sure that there's no more interest on the part of the male, since the female's gravid, I'll go ahead and separate them. But this will probably go until April or May. And in some localities, some of my BCCs, I even keep together until around June. Those are my locality boa constrictor pairings that I have this year. Fingers crossed I'm going to get some really nice babies. I'll continue to update you guys in these videos with regular updates on how my pairings are going. So if you see something that caught your interest, be sure to subscribe to the Brian Boas YouTube channel so you don't miss these updates. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me on social media. Thanks for your attention and enjoy your boas.